On today's show, Bollinger reveals the B1 and B2, no nonsense work trucks and utes it hopes will get everyone off diesel for good. We learn, despite what Nissan has said in the past, that it's possible to put a 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf battery in an older Nissan Leaf and an all electric Corvette becomes the world's fastest street legal electric car. Again, these stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we are 50% community owned. Why not join us and switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi folks, welcome to another roundup in the world of clean cars and energy. We have a great show for you today, including details of a new ute, which I think would be great in New Zealand. So why not start there? Thursday this week, Detroit-based Bollinger officially revealed its B1 and B2 electric SUV and electric ute. These two rugged all-wheel drive class three trucks offer incredible off-road performance and load carrying capability. They have a 4.5 second sprint time and all aluminium construction. While price hasn't yet been set, I can tell you that both trucks boast 614 horsepower, 7,500 pounds of towing capabilities, 5,200 pounds of payload and a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack that promises nearly 200 miles of range. We're just a few days away from the end of the quarter and as such, it's all hands on deck at Tesla to ensure as many cars get delivered to customers as possible before the start of October. According to a leaked email from Elon Musk to employees, it looks like Tesla is set yet again to break its delivery records, smashing the 100,000 vehicles in a quarter mark for the first time in the company's history. I'd love to know if you're getting a new Tesla this week, so make sure you leave a comment below if you are. A former production facility owned by General Motors in South Korea will become home to the production of the US spec Byton M-Byte electric car. While the high-tech vehicle will be made in China for Chinese customers, the South Korean facility, now part of the Myungshing Company, which I should note is a part supplier to both Hyundai and Tesla, will make all US destined Byton M-Bytes. This allows Byton to completely circumvent any issues caused by the ongoing US-China trade war. In a few weeks' time, Volvo will officially unveil a fully electric version of its XC40 SUV and this week it started the process of teasing out information for the same. Calling it one of the safest cars it's ever built, Volvo says the all-electric XC40 will feature a brand new advanced driver assistance system package that makes use of radars, cameras and ultrasonic sensors. While it doesn't specifically say so in the press release, this does seem to suggest its pre-reveal press material thinks that the XC40 will eventually get fully autonomous capabilities. For as long as the Nissan LEAF has been in production, owners of older, higher mileage cars have dreamt of the day when they could upgrade their car's battery pack to get the same range and capabilities as more modern LEAFs. And there have been plenty of companies around the world trying to make that a reality. But for almost as long, Nissan has said that wasn't possible. Now, a European company called Muxan has confirmed it's got 10 original Nissan Leafs driving around with 40 kilowatt hour battery packs inside them. It's been made possible thanks to some clever spoofing of the original battery pack hardware and software. And while not available worldwide yet, it's said to cost approximately 10,000 US dollars or equivalent. Despite slow sales of its first-generation Mirai fuel cell sedan, as well as ongoing fuel shortages at hydrogen filling stations around the world caused by equipment failures and supply chain issues, Toyota has confirmed that it will be debuting its second-generation Mirai fuel cell sedan next year. Unlike the first-generation Toyota Mirai, which is almost exclusively hand-built, the second-generation Mirai will leverage economies of scale and will be much more mass-produced. We don't know yet what will happen in terms of filling stations, but remember Japan is very focused on hydrogen fuel cell vehicles right now, and the Mirai will be debuting at the next Olympics, which happens to be in Tokyo. Canu, a Los Angeles company that you may remember by its former name of eVelocity, has unveiled its first vehicle, the Canu. 
But this isn't just another electric car company following in the tyre tracks of Tesla. This is a company that doesn't want you to buy an electric car, but rather lease it on subscription. And its first vehicle is rather different too. It's more of a futuristic vision of what a minivan could have been, or perhaps a re-envisaging of a Volkswagen microbus. There's no world on cost, but it promises a range of 250 miles per charge from an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack. Tuning specialists Hennessy is known for its massively powerful versions of already powerful all-American muscle cars, sports cars and pickup trucks. But this week, the Texas-based tuning house announced it's going to be working on its first electric vehicle ever, the Porsche Taycan. The images released alongside the announcement certainly look the part, and initially the company says that most of the mods it's going to be doing will be related to styling or suspension and other handling matters. Eventually, though, it says it wants to tweak the motor and power electronics. Watch this space. SpaceX and Tesla have always had a symbiotic relationship, thanks to most of the two firms sharing the same CEO in Elon Musk. So far, that symbiotic relationship has seen Elon Musk's own original roadster head to space with Starman at the wheel. But this week, we learned that Tesla is building battery packs for SpaceX's Starship prototype Mark I, a craft which will eventually lead to SpaceX's manned Mars missions. Aside from the kudos, there are some major cost savings to this partnership for both firms, a partnership which extends to other things too, like manufacturing and welding. It's now been more than four years since the Dieselgate scandal broke, but this past week, high-profile executives at several large automakers have been charged with market manipulation and other illegal activities. Various Fiat Chrysler, Daimler and Volkswagen executives have all been charged by authorities this week, including Volkswagen's current CEO, Herbert Diaz. Investigations are still going on into many automakers' involvement in Dieselgate, and honestly, I don't think this will be the last we see or hear of this massive industry-wide scandal. And finally, the C7 Chevrolet Corvette is a fast car, a very fast car, and it's usually the epitome of high-speed, high-octane fun for those who like that kind of thing. But this week, the Genovation GXE, an all-electric sports car, based on the C7 VET, had set another record, becoming the fastest electric road legal car, hitting 210 miles per hour, 210.2 miles per hour at a standing mile, it beat its previous record, which it set last year when it was still a prototype. You will eventually be able to buy one, but it will cost you 1.1 million Kiwi dollars, plus the price of a C7 Corvette. So not cheap then. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show and do send your feedback to us. We love hearing from you. Make sure too that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you're at a computer, why not switch to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company? It's super easy to make the change. And if you do, you're going to be helping New Zealand towards a zero emission future. And that's got to be better for everyone. I'll be back soon with a new episode, but until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time!